What's going on folks? Um, this video, we're going to talk about when bad things happen to good people and the lingering belief in karma. One of the things that I find to be extremely interesting is that people don't pay attention to things that are happening right before their eyes. All right, so before we get into that, shout out to all of the new subscribers and your well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is a joy to wake up every morning and go through the comments section and see all of these well-constructed, thoughtful, intellectual comments. So from me to you, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna get into some that's gonna be a little out there for this video. I'm gonna talk about me. Um, there are many people who believe in karma. For the record, I don't believe in karma. And I'm gonna explain to you why I don't believe in karma. Uh, I feel that karma is something that people who don't have any power in their life feel that there's some random invisible force that's gonna come out and set the record straight because someone did something bad. I don't, I don't think that at all. Um, I'm gonna talk about me. Years and years ago, when I was a normal, regular dude, I worked two, three years, two, three jobs. I was married. I didn't cheat on my wife. I didn't hit my wife. I didn't drink. I didn't do drugs. So from the karma perspective, I was a pretty good dude. I, I, I didn't have any bad things. I had, you know, many long-term friendships and stuff. I had a lot of stuff going on. And I remember, and this is where we got to get a little creepy. This is gonna be really, really weird. And I've never told anyone this before. I was at work one day and I go into a patient's room. I used to work in the hospital. And the patient is in the bed, hands folded across their chest. Looks like she's asleep. In the chair was the same woman in black knitting. And I was like, she has a twin. That's really crazy, right? So I started talking to her twin and she says, I am not her twin, I am her. I am here to deliver you a message. Super creepy, right? And she's like, I'm like, what message? She's like, in a few years from now, your life is going to be extremely harsh. It's going to be extremely bad. And you're going to think that God has forsaken you. And she says, what I'm here to tell you is you need to hold on to your goodness because your goodness is what will get you through. And I was like, so this is you and this is you. And she says, I died last night at 1.30 in the morning. I've just been waiting for you because I've been instructed to give you this message. Because you are going to lose hope, you're going to lose your mind, and I'm here to tell you, you have to cling to your goodness. And like that, she disappeared. So the nurse comes in the room and I tell the nurse, I was like, I think she passed away. And the nurse checked, she said, oh my goodness, she did die. I wonder what time she died. And I said, probably like 1.30 in the morning, right? And then I go home and, you know, for two years, my life is good. Then I fell into a very bad situation where I lost my job, I wrecked my car. I was homeless. I was taking showers in the gym. So I was so-called a good person that fell upon tragedy. I mean, and I remember one morning I was in that boarding house. I was in there shaving and looking in the mirror. And I remember what this lady had told me. I had to hang on to the goodness. 
And if you didn't know, I conducted some white collar crime, uh, some credit card fraud. And I was credit card fraud and check fraud. And I was really, really successful at it. And I was in there in the in this morning after because essentially I just kind of did these things. And I didn't know if they were going to work. And when they worked, I was like completely shocked. I was completely blown away. And I was in the bathroom and was shaving. And I didn't feel too good about myself because I knew what I was doing was wrong. And guess who shows up? And she says, remember, you have to hold on to your goodness. Then she disappeared again. So I stopped doing the white collar crime and I actually returned the money and I never did it again. And from that moment on, I was about 15 months in there. And let me explain the situation to y'all. I was in the boarding house. And if you don't know what the boarding house is, it's a place that a bunch of strangers share living accommodations. I had a guy in the back who was a stone cold alcoholic. Uh, the girl across me was a prostitute. She would bring her tricks in. Another guy, he was a crack addict. These were my roommates. And you never knew what would happen because I was dealing with a lot of the demo people, worthless people. I didn't have this terminology back then, but that's what I was dealing with. I remember a dude pulled a gun, waving the gun around the kitchen because someone had took his butter. This was my normal everyday existence. Function, criminality. Like one evening, I was just sitting on the front, just sitting on the front, and this girl who was a known prostitute literally walking down the street and she has a gun in her hand and she's walking and she'll take a few steps and bam she's shooting the ground bam and she went around the corner like that i didn't say a, i didn't want to startle her this is the stuff that i saw i mean it was crazy and then i started to get myself together and i, I tell you this because I didn't do anything. I didn't commit any crimes. I didn't have any uh, blood curses or no. When it's your time for something bad and messed up to happen to you, it's your time. You don't have to do anything. And I'm going to tell you something that's really, really sad. And this used to really ponder me. Um, I used to work in the children's hospital and I would see children with cancer. And they would come in and they would be normal and healthy weight. And like six months later, they would lose half, if not more than their body weight. They would be, they would lose their hair. And it, it was really, really touchy. Um, Cause you would see parents in the dining area and you want to ask how is little Susie or little Edwards doing, but it's really sensitive because you never know. And I remember one lunch period, I'm heading into the lunchroom and I see these parents who are just kind of standing in a weird place because they should have been getting in line. They were just standing there in this look. And I knew who these parents is, I knew their kid and I just went up to them and I looked at them and they looked at me and I knew that the kid had died and I just hugged them. And the woman just started crying. The husband started crying. I mean, that job literally ripped my heart out every day because you would see these healthy, these, well, not healthy, these innocent, beautiful children dying. What did they do? What did you do with six months to get this so-called karma? What did you do? To, I, I mean, it, it was just, I remember it was this little kid. He was cool as hell. And he had uh, sickle cell anemia. And he had a very bad case of sickle cell anemia. It literally stunted his growth. He was about six to seven inches shorter than kids his age because of the sickle cell anemia. And he was just a cool little dude. And then I remember one day he comes in 
And you know, he 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 had a little fresh little, you know, he he had a little bow tie. He was a little dapper dude, right? And he comes in and we're just talking and he says, "You know I'm going to die, right?" I'm like, "What?" And he says, "No one wants to tell me, but I'm going to die real soon. This is probably the last time that I'll see you." And he's like, "You've been good to me. I really appreciate the help." A week later, this kid died. A week later, this little healthy, well, this energetic, intelligent, well-spoken little man died. What's up with the karma with that? See, I mean, and I remember because uh, we would have a list because, you know, everybody was invested in these kids. It was just heartbreaking it was literally heartbreaking to see these young innocent children just dying all over the place and i remember there was this girl she was about 16. um beautiful girl beautiful girl she had blonde hair down to her butt she comes in with cancer and at first it, the prognosis seems good she comes in in january and then by um, March, her hair is gone because she's on chemo. All her hair is falling out and everything. And at this point, I was rocking the, the shaved head. And she says, I look just like you. And I say, like, hey, you, you look good. You look good. Because even though she was bald, she was still a beautiful girl. And then the cancer became extremely aggressive. And between January and June, this, this girl died. The last time I saw her, she lost maybe 60 pounds. I mean, she was skin and bone. She didn't look nothing like what she looked like in January. And I remember, and uh, <clears throat> this is the thing that got me. The kids were stronger than the parents. Because this girl, she's like, you know, I'm probably going to die soon. You know, it's nice knowing you. And she shook my hand. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's just... Man, that just, I mean, it would just mess up your day. The, when someone like tells you that and the kids, they knew they were gonna die. They knew and man, and you know, and that day she died. She said, she, they, they knew. And it, it, it just, it, it was just like, these were young, innocent, they haven't lived long enough to create any bad karma. And they were literally dying all over the place. And um, I remember this one kid, he was telling me, I gotta be strong because my mom, you know, she's gonna miss me. These were the conversations I was having with these kids. They knew they were gonna die. And they went bravely facing what was coming. So, that's one of the reasons I don't believe in karma. I've seen too many good, innocent people die from bad things. And then here's the other side. I mentioned this guy I used to work with. He was the type, um, as you know, like I did my um, the Machiavelli effect video. Him and Machiavelli, they were like that. They would have been boys. Um, he was that kind of dude. This guy, white dude, he had the Michael Douglas haircut. He was rich. His wife, not only was she beautiful, his wife was extremely kind. And he had the nicest kids. I met him, the wife, and the children. This, this dude was evil. Had the best life ever was riding around in a Porsche, owned four companies, and he was evil. And I, 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 when I ran into him, and I remember having a conversation with another dude that he had screwed over. And we were just sitting there and we were just talking about it. And I was like, and we started talking about karma. I said, I don't believe in karma. He said, what do you mean? It's like this mofo who screwed you over, who screwed me over, look at his life. Beautiful wife, beautiful kids, beautiful home. Where's the karma? And I told him, I used to work in the hospital and I used to see all these innocent kids just dying all over the place. There ain't no karma for me. 
there ain't no karma for me because uh essentially i look back at all of these little kids that i had these conversations with because it, it was so introspective that i would have a kid who knew they were going to die and they would be able to articulate this with to me and none of them ever like cried or broke down because so many of these little kids these beautiful little kids were being strong for the parents they knew that they had to be strong for their parents and you know one night i was working in the emergency room and this um, family comes in they were parked at the gas station and someone who was drunk hit their parked car in the draft gas station and the mother was holding the baby and the force of the accident ripped the baby from her arms and threw the baby up into the windshield and dealing with new parents and there's something wrong with their baby it is a very touchy tricky situation because this is their baby this is their brand new baby they're so excited they're full of happiness they're full of joy and we they bring the mother in and they bring the baby in and uh i actually was in the trauma and the doctor said based on the x-ray the baby's brain literally slammed into the skull so the baby was brain dead the bet the heart was still beating but the baby was essentially gone and then the doc had to tell the parent and and the the moan the groan that came from the back of the er was it just went all i mean very very sad situation very very sad situation so what did that little baby do in terms of karma to be ripped from his mother's arms and slammed into the windshield. I present to you, there's no such thing as karma. And I'm gonna tell you why people believe in karma. Everyone wants to think of someone getting their just desserts. And I'm about to tell you something, and you don't have to believe me, you can look it up. There's a show called The First 48. Because typically, if they don't get that murder solved in the first 48, it turns into a cold case, which means they never find the perpetrator. Right now, in these United States of America, there are people walking amongst us who have killed someone and got away with it. Where, where, where's the karma? They have literally killed someone, taken a life and gotten away with it. Where's the karma? See, karma doesn't exist. I'm about to go a little left. Karma and wrestling are in the same category because poor people who don't want to be, because this is one of the things I see with the pathology of poor people. Poor people rather be entertained than educated. Entertainment is easy. This is why wrestling, which is fake, is a multi-billion dollar industry. Wrestling, which is fake. It is scripted. The Rock, The Rock, whether well, The Rock's cooking, oh, it, it, it's, it's, it's theater. It's not real. But the same people who believe in karma believe in wrestling. They do. Because, you know, I've had some, you know, like, let's, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, because if you're new here, I was doing something called the Kill Switch Chronicles, and absolutely it was the worst business I've ever started. Worst business. And people were saying that you're cursed, this is unnatural, and there's, you did something to somebody. All right. And I want you guys to listen to me. It'll listen to me very well. You don't have to do anything to anyone for bad things to happen to you. It doesn't work that way. Now, I'm about to get into some really 
strange stuff. Um, the reason the car rental business didn't work for me is because it's a bad business. It's just a bad business. And recently I discovered that a lot of people have left hire car because I was in there looking. There used to be like almost 20 pages and there's nine. Half the people have left the platform for all of the issues that I'm having. I'm not the only one that's going through this. I'm the only one that's talking about it. Um, there's a, someone, I can't remember his name. He, he rents cars and he's going through the same thing. He's had a car that was driven by, and this is a big problem. They will frequently allow someone else to drive the car. And if that person gets into an accident, you're not covered because the insurance only goes with the primary renter. And guys, karma ain't real. It ain't real. I mean, I've lived this life. I've just seen too many good, innocent people die because that's how life is. And I'm about to now during my supernatural moments, uh, when I was in that boarding house, I started to get into meditation and I got real deep into meditative states. And I saw some freaky stuff. Uh, one morning, I went into an hour long. I saw things that freaked me out. I've never done an hour long meditative state since then. The stuff that I saw, I saw my future. And I believe I saw my death. And to see when you're gonna die is kind of freaking out. Like, if you didn't know, I've almost died like two times. And based upon the vision, I'm gonna live to be 95, 95, 96. And what this lady who came to me in the hospital told me, proved to be true because my life hasn't been um, bad since then. And one of the things is I don't really do like with these people in these cars, like with me selling the cars, like if someone sends me a low ball offer, I'll just send them a, a message on Facebook, the car's gone. There ain't no point in dealing with these people, right? And these people are extremely pesky, aggregating, because this happened this morning. It's like, hey man, you told me the car wasn't available, but I still see it on here on Facebook Marketplace. And this is what I told him. I said, you offered me half of what I'm asking for. Now, let's go ahead and it say that you came out and looked at the car. What are you gonna do? You're gonna look at the car and you're gonna try to find everything that's wrong with it, maybe take an hour or two of my time and get the price even lower. I, I don't want to do that. That's just a waste of my time. It's annoying and irritating. So I really don't want to do business with you. And then he hit me back up. He said, man, it's like that. I'm just trying to get a deal. I was like, you're trying to get a deal. I'm trying to make the most money possible. So we're diametrically opposed. So there ain't no point in us even meeting. Good luck with your finding your deal. Cause you're not getting it with me. Cause I'm not desperate. I want to sell this car, but I don't have to sell this car. And he's like, man, can we talk? You know, we talk business. I was like, you're not trying to talk business. You're trying to steal a car for a price where you can put it back on the marketplace and make some money. You're not trying to do business. You're trying to steal my car. And then I blocked him and left him alone. Because one of the things I've learned, and if you can understand this, that bad things happen to good people every day. All right, so when I was in the meditative state, I saw some things. And I saw things before they happened. And it, it, it's a weird thing because it's like deja vu. It's like you remember something that you remember before, but you know, I've had time to analyze it. I saw things before they happened. I know that's freaky and crazy, um, but I did. And if I had been paying attention to that, 
because, you know, my life has been on an upward trajectory. Um, and one of the things that I, I consistently see is if I hold on to my goodness, like once again, I, you know, there, there are people here that are really funny on YouTube. Like now there's, I am buying views and I am buying comments for you people who are leaving these well-constructed comments. Somehow I have bought that comment. Uh, one of the things, if you know anything about YouTube, uh, there's only one legal way to buy views on YouTube and that's to buy ads. I'm not running any ads and I'm not buying comments. See, excuse me, that was deep. Uh, one of the things I've come to realize is I as a person am very polarizing. Either people really, really like me or they really don't. There doesn't seem to be any middle ground. And for all of the people out there that I am pissing off, like a lot of you new people have come from the Black Money video with A.G. Gaston. And a lot of you really appreciate that video and you, I, I see it. I was like, man, finally someone that said it. Because here's the thing, the progressive, normal, well-meaning black people are tired of the trash black people because they make us look bad. We're just sick of y'all. We're just sick of y'all. And I'm gonna do a whole video on that because there's a movement that is coming because one of the things that I'm seeing is that more and more black people are getting more progressive. They're doing stuff. Um, but yeah, we're sick of y'all. And there is a civil war in the black community because one of the reasons that I am hated on YouTube is because I'm successful. That's it. That's it. I haven't done anything to anyone. I haven't harmed anyone. I haven't scammed anyone. I haven't hoodwinked anyone. No, I'm just successful. And here's the thing. The same people who believe in wrestling and karma are the same people who do not believe that if they work hard, they will be successful. They, they're incapable of even holding that thought process in their mind. They feel that success is for white people or Asian people or Hispanic people. If you're black, you're doomed, you're screwed. And these are the people who hate the A.G. Gaston video because A.G. Gaston became a multimillionaire during the same time frame that Emmett Till was killed for whistling at a white woman. See, it's kind of hard for them to conceptualize and to actually understand the ramifications of an A.G. Gaston who lived to be a very old man. I grew up in Birmingham and I used to go to the A.G. Gaston's Boys Club. A.G. Gaston did so many things for so many different people and his legacy should be celebrated. And what's funny is there's a lot of people who don't even know who A.G. Gaston is. Don't know who he is. A black man that built multi-million dollar empire. They don't even know who he is, but they know who Cardi B is. They know who the, the Rock is. They know who all these people, because I think A.G. Gaston provides a template of what you can do. And A.G. Gaston was serving his own people. He became a millionaire serving black folks. A millionaire serving black folks. And more than likely, he probably served some white folks. I will have to do a little bit more research, but I know his primary audience was black folks. But one of the things now, I don't believe in karma, but I do believe in ghosts. I do believe in aliens. I don't think that we're the only ones in the universe. And, and as we go through life, I feel that we'll get evidence of that. This is something else that has happened. And this is one of the reasons that I believe in the supernatural, because I've had a lot of things happen. When I was a kid, I was messing around in the living room. I was about 12, 13 years old and was in the living room and this hot coin falls out the ceiling. And the coin had some kind of you know, usual 
markings on it. It wasn't American corn, it was like a foreign corn. It literally dropped out the ceiling and it was hot to the touch. And then it disappeared. Don't know what that means. If you know what that stuff means, let me know. And this is something else that's kind of freaky spooky. When I wrote my first book, and that's where it all started. That's when all of this stuff really, really started. I got a message from a woman on Facebook and she's like, hi, my name is Mary. And I was like, okay. Then she said, I got a message for you. All right. When you get a, you know, and I, I kind of heard that before from the lady in the hospital. I was like, oh, what is, what is this? And she said, she tells me stuff about myself that she couldn't have known. Like, if you didn't know, well, you don't know, because I've never mentioned this. I had a nickname as a kid, and she knew my nickname. And she knew other things about me. And I was like, what is this message? It's a message from your grandmother. Your grandmother has been your guardian angel. She's had your back. She's been looking over you, and she wished she would leave the floozies alone. My grandmother was a no-nonsense kind of person. My grandmother was my mom. So you ever feel like you have someone in your corner? You can't see them, but you can just feel that there's a presence in your life. And for the longest, I always felt that there was somebody there and it was my grandmother. Now I know this is some freaky deaky, extracurricular stuff that you've never heard from me. But yeah, I believe in ghosts. I believe in the supernatural and I believe in the afterlife because I want you to think about this. My grandmother knew that I was messing with a bunch of floozies. And this thought came to me the other day because I was laying in bed and I was looking up. I was like, can my grandmother see me fucking? Really? You, you like, wait a minute, because ghost. They come and go as they please. I'm like, my grandma watching me bone? <laughs> wow. That's a deep thought. That's a deep thought. But yeah, man, I just did this video to get the notion of karma out of your head because uh, I've seen all kinds of stuff because like when everything, anyone thing, anything bad happens to me and I'm going to say, Last, since I got on this track, the worst thing that have happened to me is the car rental business. And I got into it not knowing what I was getting myself into it. That worst thing that I can think of that has happened to me in 20 years, 20 years. So once again, there is no karma. Let that go. If something bad has happening to you, it's your time. G bad things happen to good people every day. And if you're on that whole notion that you have high morals and high character, and nothing's bad going to happen to you. You're going to be crushed when something bad happens to you because you're operating on what's called a false narrative. Um, it's a false narrative. Like once again, like I said, I've almost died two times. And for some reason, I've been able to come away from it because my uh, cardiologist is kind of shocked at how well that I've recovered from the heart attack. So guys, bad things happen to good people every day. You don't have to do anything to anyone for anything bad to happen to you. Just let that go, just let that go. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, it is February, so after Super Bowl Sunday, I'm gonna start some new training. Give me a little time to get all that together and I will start broadcasting that because a lot of you have been asking me questions and so forth and it like, you know, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. But let me know your feelings and opinions on today's video and I will see you guys in the next one.